Hey guys, I'm Dustin with Redline Engineering and Redline Stands. Today we're going to show you how to put together a Titan 7,000 pound four post lift. This is the non-XLT. This lift comes standard with jack trays, drip trays, and a caster kit. Uh, we're going to show you how to get that done. One of the things that I like to do is have all my stuff laid out nice and easy, easily accessible. And uh, let's get started. We're going to lay this tower down, both towers, take the caps off. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and assemble the H frame that the runways sit on. We're only going to show you this on one end because it's identical on both ends. What you're going to want to do is turn your tower up on the side. You've got these locks, these automatic locks. So when you go to slide it down into the tower, you have to keep those pulled out of the way. Now for assembly, what you want to do is slide it down to the very bottom lock. There's about an 18 inch gap between the rest of your locks and the very bottom one. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do now. Okay, now we got that in place, we're going to go ahead and stand the towers up and then put the end caps back on. Alright guys, now that we have the H-frame set up and in place, fun part comes. We're going to go ahead and install the runways. Now we're going to start with the passenger side runway and the reason for that is is it doesn't have this real heavy hydraulic cylinder underneath it, okay? Uh, and it makes a lot more sense to negotiate this lighter one first, get it bolted into place and sure everything up. Now one thing you always want to make sure is that you've got this lip pointed towards the inside. Now, this, now for the purpose of the install, you've got this, this ledge right here in your overhang. You want to measure from the front to the rear. And for the purpose of the installation video, we've gone ahead and done that. Uh, it's 156 inches. So the reason that that's important is over here on our H frame, we want the, the distance set correctly so we're not trying to struggle with these heavy runways and move the H frames too. So at the inside H uh, mark right here is where you're gonna wanna measure 156 inches to the rear one. And that way you can just set it up, set your runways over, bolt it all together and have a have a sturdy frame okay now we're going to show you how two men can load the passenger side runway into place uh, and this is the easiest way we found to do it okay guys now that we have the runway in place what we're going to do is take these brackets that go on each end uh, all four corners and what it is, it's, it's got a little spacer here, and what that allows you to do, it's a really great idea, is you can put either these wheel stops on this end or that end, or the ramps on this end or that end. Now, I'm not gonna show you doing all, every single corner of it, because no point of it, because these are at, at every single end, like I stated, but when we bolt it into place, this is a wheel stop. We're actually gonna put this on the other end because the way that we have this machine set up is the power unit is on the front left corner of the front driver's side, but just drops right in to keep you from rolling off. But this is where our ramp is gonna go. Okay, now we're gonna put in the, uh, the heavier driver's side runway. And the reason this is heavier, as I talked about in the beginning, is that it's got the, uh, the big hydraulic cylinder. Now we're lucky enough to have a couple of extra guys, and if you can drum up a couple of extra guys, I highly recommend you doing that. We're not gonna show you bolting uh, each end because all that stuff is the same. So we're just gonna set it into place and they'll go from there. Okay guys, now that we've got our runways in place, everything's bolted together and tightened down, now it's time to get our cables installed. I like to wear gloves with these because sometimes you will get a little bit of a splinter in there. Now you've got four different cables, four different lengths. And what we've gone and done here is set the longest cable up at the, uh, that would be your front right from where you're at, and uh, this is gonna be the, the side with the power unit, okay? And that will have the, the next longest cable. Back here is then again the next longest or the next to last longest and then this tower here will be the shortest. Noted by the sizes and what we're gonna do with these guys is we're going to feed them from the top down and you'll see when you look down in here and you're doing your install, you'll have a pulley here, you'll have a pulley here, you'll have pulleys on the inside and basically what happens 
is you route all these cables through these little pulleys and it's pretty self-explanatory once you start doing it but you've got this big hydraulic cylinder under this runway that we've talked about and I'm going to show you how to pull it out a little bit to give you a little bit of extra working room and we're going to go ahead and start to do this now okay guys one of the things over the years that I figured out makes this job a lot easier is to take this cylinder while it's unhooked and uh, extend it out and you don't want it right on top of the pulleys here at the back because it won't give you much room to work I like to have it about uh, you know 18 inches to 24 inches from the very back where all the the, the four pulleys are set up at um, And that obviously keeps you from having to try and stretch cables that don't stretch now um, You know, it's not always easy, but you can pull it out You may have to get after it with a hammer a little bit, but I just kind of prop up on it and... Basically repeat that process until you get it about where you want it to be. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and route these cables. And what we do, we've taken the, uh, the lock nut off and the threaded end. It's going to go up through this hole. Remember we said we wanted it on the inside so it would line up with the pulley on the H-beam there. Uh, definitely want to put your washer on there. This is a lock nut, so you don't want to tighten it all the way down. Just hand tighten it will work because uh, you want to you leave yourself extra room there. Uh, so you got some extra adjustment on this this other side Okay, now that we've got all of our cables run, you've got your, your cylinder, your piston that we've extended all the way out. I went ahead and came within, I guess, about 12 inches of the pulleys here on the, the, the back end. You see you've got this plate. You've got two plates actually here that um, these little guys fit into. Now, they, you know, it's going to take you messing with it for a minute. They don't just pop right in and, and easy because you don't want it to be an easy in, easy out type of thing. But, you know, what you want to do is make sure that you've got your your cables uh, lined up on the pulleys and then basically get them in there uh, and we'll start to do that. Now before we run the uh, run the motor I just got back down here and made sure that everything's good the, the cables are on the pulleys we're gonna go ahead and tighten down our uh, our plate here because uh, you don't want that coming loose. Well, if I have kind of a sheepish look, uh, it's because I pulled a bonehead move and I thought that I'd share that with you uh, so you could avoid doing it. Uh, in the interest of full disclosure, maybe I am a bonehead. What I've done here is I've taken the cable uh, on the back side here and I routed it to the top pulley. And the reason that that is not a good idea is because A, you've got this bolt that comes through and it'll make contact with that, that uh, bolt. Um, and the same thing on the other side. I've routed this, this cable down to the bottom, uh, which is uh, it, it's making it, I've routed it to the top and it made it jump off the pulley and it needs to be routed towards the bottom. I'm gonna fix my mistake right quick and we'll be right back after it. Okay, now that we have our cables in place, we're gonna go ahead and put the power unit on and hook up the hydraulics. Uh, we strongly recommend that you use two guys. It's been done by one before, but you really don't wanna do that. And the main reason is it's really, really heavy. You're sitting there trying to get it uh, mounted up to the, to the tower here, and the chances of you dropping it and busting you know, the motor or the reservoir are pretty high. And the reason we're gonna do this right quick is so we can raise the whole uh, runways up when we go to put the locking system in that we're not bending over, you know, hurting our backs doing that stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and mount this right quick. It's got a, another place for two more bolts, but we just did that to, to get it hung. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten it down now uh, and put the other bolts in. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and hook the lines up. You've got a, a little fitting here on the outside of the pump. You're gonna take this whole thing out. We like to wrap ours in thread tape. If it's a beveled line, you don't need to, a high pressure beveled line, you don't need to put thread tape on it, but where it feeds into the motor with, uh, 
this little elbow fitting right here. It's going to go in just like this. You've got a little, little rubber grommet, a little rubber seal. And it's actually important to know that if you push, uh, put this in and you over tighten it, what you'll do is you'll flatten that little rubber seal out so bad that it'll cause it to leak. I've actually seen uh, these things leak a little bit and instead of tightening it, it just takes a, a little quarter turn back out and that's what uh, causes that seal to set. So we're gonna go ahead and get the uh, hydraulics hooked up, run the hose down and I'll show you how the, uh, the, the hydraulic line comes out from the, uh, from the runway here. We'll get that hooked up and we'll send it in the air. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and uh, put in our, our hydraulic fluid. A lot of people uh, like to ask us, you know, what to put in there. And this video will, will serve to, uh, uh, you know, help different guys put together different machines. So what we're going to tell you is consult your manual. Okay, now here under the, uh, the main runway, we've got the hydraulic fitting that hooks up to the cylinder. What we're going to do is remove one of these nuts and there's a hole here in the side of it. Might have to fuss with it a little bit to get it in there. Not, not too bad, so we're gonna go ahead and tighten that booger down. Now this is a 110 setup. It plugs directly into the wall, and it's very important to note that if you don't have a uh, socket and outlet near you, you don't want to run a very long, thin extension cord. You'll burn your power unit up. So what we actually have done is gone to uh, the local hardware store and gotten a short uh, appliance type extension cord. And that's what we're going to hook up. I want to say that this, uh, this reservoir holds two and a half, two and three quarter gallons of hydraulic fluid. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hook that up now. Then we uh, will operate it tighten the cables up a little bit and make sure they're on their pulleys and then we'll uh, pick it up, add the lock system, adjust it, and then we'll be done. All right, now that we've got our cables routed correctly, we're going to go ahead and start the process back over again, lift it up, and uh, here we go. Okay, there's a three-piece locking system that goes under the runway. You've got two pieces like this. The one on the other end doesn't have the handle. We've already installed that. Then you've got this long connecting rod here in the center. Basically, you've got this pin here with this spacer. We put it through there, and then we've got this nut that we're going to thread. You've got these channels that it can go in. Now what I'm going to do is take and get this guy started. And feed it down. We'll go ahead and get him that started. All right, now we'll continue to route that in and thread that as well. Now you want to use, I use a pair, spare pliers, 10 locks, oh, on the wrong thing. Okay, on this system, this, this linkage, we've got two uh, threaded uh, spacers here, the linkages that's got a jam nut on either side, so you've got four total, but obviously you want to take and make sure that you tighten these down. All right, folks, now we're at the section of the video where we're going to show you how to install the locks. Uh, they're the same on both ends, so we're just going to show you on this end. Uh, it's really simple. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to start with this guide pin here, uh, and it screws right here in the middle, and what that does is it keeps the, the metal rod from bowing up. So I'm just going to go ahead and screw this on in. And this rod 
you've got these on both ends, which you got to take that off in order to thread it through your, your guide pin there. And then we're going to put it back on. Uh, this end here, you see it's got a little barrel piece and it goes into a, a lock right here. And I'm going to show you in, in a little bit more detail down on the other end because uh, there's a couple more pieces there, but we just stick it in right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you the other end since it's a little more detailed down there. All right, now that we've got this linkage in place, what we're going to do is go ahead and finish this out. So I'm going to take the end, we're going to hook it to the top, and we're going to take the short bar here and hook it to the bottom. And the reason that that's important is not only because we've done it on the same way on the other end, but also when you go to release the lock mechanism, you want to pull it away from the vehicle. See if the vehicle is, is lowered, has a low profile kit or ground effects, and you have to push the lock that way, it's gonna hit the car and not allow you to, to release it. So that's why we hook it to the bottom. So it pulls that way when we go to release it. I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up. Now also it's very important when you go to set this machine down all the way down to the bottom you don't want to leave it like that because you'll leave all the weight on your lock mechanism here so once you get down past your bottom lock you want to make sure and push it back into place so it sets down on the runways like it's supposed to. All right here we are ready to adjust the cables and the way that we do this is we're going to take and run the runways all the way to the very very top. Uh, you're not going to be sitting on a safety lock, you want, it, you want it all as high as it'll go. We've gone around to each tower and made sure that the, uh, the bolt is threaded at least flush with the top of the, uh, the, the nylon uh, locking nut. So, I mean, you can, you can feel that there. Now, the way that you do this is you get a measurement on each tower. From We're doing ours from the bottom of the H-bar down to the ground. And our front we've measured is 67 and 3 eighths and what you do this end is lower so what you do is you bring the lower end up to meet the higher end at which point my trusty steed slash brother will help me do this he's going to measure and then tell me when to stop All right, now we're at 67 and 3 eighths all the way around, and uh, we're going to drop this thing and put a car on it. Titan comes with a 110 volt power unit. These uh, are already pre-wired. Sometimes you're not going to have enough length uh, to get to a, uh, a wall outlet, so we definitely recommend that you use a short, fat extension cord. Don't use a very long extension cord, you'll burn the motor up. Now I'm going to go ahead and raise this all the way to the top. And while you're doing that, you'll be able to see the locks clicking into place also. And here we go. All right, guys. Well, that's our Titan 7,000 pound standard four post lift. I'm going to go ahead and lift it back up off of the uh, safety locks. Disengage the locks and set it down. Guys, we appreciate you taking the time to watch our video. We hope you found it helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, give us a call at 901-351-4764 or visit us at redlinestands.com. I'm Dustin and I really appreciate you taking the time to watch our video. Have a good one.